What is it like to be assigned a date by the state? In this country, as long as you are over 16 years old, the state will automatically match you with a partner. Of course, love is absolutely forbidden here. And the state's policy of uniformly assigning objects is also known as the scientific red line of happiness. But this kind of mandatory marriage also brings a lot of trouble to people. The main character Xiao Zhen is one of them. He has been secretly in love with the goddess Gao Qi for five years. She is the crush of almost every boy in the school. Whenever he thinks of Gao Qi, the hero can't help but feel his heart racing. On that day, he summoned up all his courage and gave half an eraser to the goddess. This is how he got the chance to talk to Gao Qi. A thank you that he kept in his heart. But after so many years, he never had the chance to talk to Gao Qi again. During dinner, the family mentions the hero's birthday the day after tomorrow. By then, he will be notified by the government. The parents are curious about what their future daughter in law will look like. But Negi looked very lost. Because then he will have no chance to fall in love with Gao Qi at all. The two of them have been in love for a long time, but they are not in love with each other. But it's not easy to realize this relationship in a world where the state assigns objects. He finally builds up the courage. The next day he called up Gao Qi. He wanted a chance to have a heart-to-heart. -heart. Gao Qi tells his friends to leave first. When Xiao Zhen mentions that they went to elementary school together Gao Qi is unimpressed. This made Kone feel frustrated. He couldn't say anything in the end and could only look at Gao Qi's back as he left. Xiao Zhen began to recall the little moments with Gao Qi. Though they hardly communicated with each other Negi had always had a good vision. He meets the girl he's been crushing on for years at school and decides to ask her to meet him after school. While they barely communicate Kone's heart is full of beautiful visions. Keen waits and waits in the park until late at night. His heart aches so much that he even starts to make an ancient tomb out of sand. The police all advised him to go home early. Eventually Kotone felt lonely in the empty park. He is ready to leave. However suddenly a young girl approaches him none other than Gao Qi. Kane is excited and nervous. He was so excited that he couldn't speak. Gao Qi notices the sand sculpture of an ancient tomb he made. With this the awkward atmosphere between the two finally eases. It turns out that Gao Qi was lying when she said she didn't know Xiao Zhen before. Though Xiao Zhen didn't know why she lied. But looking at her beautiful face his love can no longer be suppressed. The sudden crying of Gao Qi confused Xiao Zhen. But she suddenly pulled out the other half of the eraser. She shows that she has been watching Negi for a long time. Hearing this news Negi was instantly touched. He was so excited that he hugged her. But Gao Qi was clearly confused by this sudden move. But how could he not be thrilled when his crush of so many years was finally reciprocated? He was about to say something when Xiao Zhen's cell phone rang. The government sent a notice. The clock struck 12 o'clock on time. The message on his cell phone showed that his marriage partner was Gao Qi. Qin is excited to say the news. But suddenly his cell phone screen goes black. After that two men from the Ministry of Labor appear. They tell Negi that there has been a change in the government notice and that the name of his marriage partner has been changed. He anxiously asked the two men why it wasn't Gao Qi. He obviously notified them all on his cell phone earlier. But the two didn't believe it at all. He was not even able to react until the two left. At that moment Gao Qi stood up next to him. She gently told Negi happy birthday. But the girl's trembling hands were a sign of her inner turmoil. After that Gao Qi ran out of the room in an emotional state. Well it's a good thing that Negi finally caught up with her. The two hugged each other tightly. On the other hand a young girl received a notice from the government. Early the next morning Negi sneaks into school to avoid a blind date. But the students who learn about the situation say they can't understand this. Even the teachers talk to him and tell him to hurry up and go on a blind date. Just when he was determined to keep running away Gao Qi's voice unexpectedly came from outside the door. Gao Qi asks him why he came to school. Xiao Zhen immediately said that he only loves Gao Qi alone. But he didn't expect that Gao Qi would say that Xiao Zhen might have misunderstood. She says it's over between them and that Xiao Zhen's behavior now bothers her. She also told Xiao Zhen to hurry up and go on a blind date. The first time I heard this I was so confused that I went to the blind date. The first thing he saw was an unusually beautiful young woman. The first thing I'd like to say is that I've never seen a girl who could match Gao Qi's looks. But as soon as he thought of what Gao Qi had said he instantly lost interest. The blind date started and the girl introduced herself as Nanako. The girl introduces herself as Nanako but Negi is distracted. Nanako sees that something is wrong with Koton. But she didn't say anything instead she answered Negi's parents' questions in a sweet voice. But with a sigh from Koton Nanako finally relented. She told Koton. If he wants to think about this go home and think about it. She would never marry someone like that. After that the young girl left the place. Keone was also forced by his parents to chase after her. On his way to find Nanako he accidentally pushed open the door. But to his surprise Nanako who was hiding inside pulled him right in. Through their conversation Negi realizes that the girl in front of him is just like him. She was also afraid of getting married. But Nanako didn't run away. She made the realization to face the reality. Keone realized his mistake. He sincerely apologizes to Nanako on his knees. Nanako was taken aback but she forgave Kone. With the atmosphere gradually easing Nanako asked about the reason for Kone's days. 
With that Negi told her about what happened between him and Taki. He had thought that talking about this with his blind date would turn Nanako off. But he didn't expect that Nanako not only didn't hate him. She also continued to ask after Koton what it was like to like. Even she discusses with Koton why Taka's attitude has changed so much. Then Nanako made a decision. She decided to help Negi and test Taka's feelings. After that the two were ready to go back. In order to keep her family from asking questions Negi suggests holding hands to show that they've made up. Although Nanako is a bit shy she agrees. With that they found their parents together. Afterwards Negi went back to school. He also showed his friends the picture. This made his friends envious. Then Yusuke spotted Taki passing by. He asked Taki if she wanted to see Negi's blind date too. But Taki just said that she didn't understand what Yusuke meant. After that Kone went to Nanako's school. He asked the two girls if they knew Nanako. But he didn't realize that the two girls called Nanako a bug. And they told Negi that she's in the health center right now. The name made Negi freeze. Then he went to the health room. Nanako was resting quietly on her bed. Naoko was resting quietly on her bed and was startled by Negi's arrival. Nanako had to change her clothes so she asked Negi to wait outside. Negan suddenly mentions the bugs to her. When Nanako hears this she rushes out without even getting dressed. She questioned Negi about who told him about the bugs. When Nanako calmed down she told Kon why. Turns out she had a very serious illness as a child. She didn't come to school until the second semester of her first year. But the girls all already had their own circles so that caused her to stay alone. As a result she was also known as Bug. Kun summarized. This is probably because Nanako has almost no social skills. But as soon as the words left his mouth he was punched away by the shy young girl. But Kone was a little envious of Nanako. While he himself couldn't speak at all Nanako could say out loud what was on her mind. That made the young girl a little shy. It was the first time someone had ever said that to her. Nanako was going to get out of here first. At this point she realized that something was wrong with her. Keen hurriedly stated that he hadn't seen anything. But he still suffers a slap from the young girl. Leaving the campus Negi asked Nanako why she let him come here. Of course it's because Nanako wants to hear about his love story with Taki. Suddenly Negi sees a pretty figure. He told Nanako that the person was Taki. He told Nanako that the person is Taki but he didn't expect Nanako to follow him. Then the two of them arrived at the cafe. Nanako opened the door and asked Gao Chi what she thought of Negi. But Taka's answer was also unexpected she actually said that she likes Negi's hair swirls. This answer made Nanako freeze. This wasn't quite what she expected. But without waiting for her to continue asking Taki directly stated that she was happy. Because this is the first time she's ever talked to someone about these topics. And just like that she talked a lot with Nanako. When it was time to part ways Taki happily asked Nanako to hang out next time. This overwhelmed Nanako who had never had friends before. When Negi came out and looked at her Nanako's tears came out. She thinks that Taki is really a good person and she's on the verge of falling in love with her. On this day Negi is invited to Nanako's house. As soon as he enters he is scolded by Nanako for being too slow. When he enters the door Negi is dumbfounded. When he enters Kone is dumbfounded that Taki is here. It turns out that Nanako invited the two together. When she saw Negi she asked to go first. But she was stopped by Nanako. Nanako says that even if she is the government's designee she won't like Kone. She tells Taki to stay here without worry. And that's when Negi offers to leave. Nanako asks him why. Before Negi can answer Taki takes the initiative and invites Negi to come and play with her. Negi is very happy to see that he can stay. However Negi can't say anything to the two girls who are having a lively conversation. He can only sit in the corner. He had no choice but to call out to Nanako. But he was told by her that her presence was too weak. Then Nanako offered to let them kiss again. This statement directly made both Kone and Taki freeze. Kanako even made a good point. They'd had it once anyway so it's okay to do it again. She asked for Taka's opinion. And Taki just said she had to go to the bathroom. When Taki left Negi immediately spat at Nanako. This comment made Taki embarrassed. Just as the two were arguing Taki came back. She offers to invite Negi for a kiss. Aone double checked. His heart thumps when he gets an affirmative answer. Koi asks Nanako if she want mind. But Nanako said. You can do whatever you want just kiss until you are satisfied. It's good to kiss every day when you're in love. This reminds Negi of Nanako's face that looks like she's chasing a TV show. But the moment he was about to kiss Negi actively avoided it. He angrily yelled at Nanako who was watching the drama next to him. Looking at Nanko's expression Taki offered to leave. She asks Nanako if her heart races when she sees the scene she just saw. Taki wants Nanako to be able to like Kone. Because she herself should be impossible with Kone. Before leaving Taki asks Nanako again. Wouldn't it annoy her if she kissed with Negi? Nanako still mouths off that it won't. Back in the room Nanako's heart was beating violently. She shouted for Negi to stay away from her. The feeling made her feel strange. That night the two of them were walking together when they ran into Yusuke Negi's best friend. Nanako immediately hides behind Negi. Yusuke says that this is not like the rumors. He didn't realize that the young girl was still close to Negi. Suddenly he asked Nanako if she was a pure maiden. 
In an instant both of them are too ashamed to speak. After receiving an affirmative answer Yusuke simply left. Nanako thought he was a pervert. Kun retorted clearly Yusuke is very handsome. But Nanako thinks he must be a pervert for asking that at the first meeting. On this day Negi and his friends have just finished exercising. Yusuke was welcomed by the girls as usual but he didn't react at all. He says that it was just fooling around. At that moment they saw Taki passing by. The girl looks beautiful in her tracksuit. But when she saw Yusuke her eyes changed. There seemed to be a different vibe between the two. This made Kone a bit puzzled. Till the time he was changing he was still thinking blindly. Is there something wrong between them? After all handsome men and beautiful women are a good match, but this makes him a little depressed. The bell rang. The first thing that happened was that the girl was not a good girl but she was a good girl and she was a good girl. But he was stopped by Gao Chi who was hiding in a corner. The two of them hid in a place where no one was around. Taki asked him what Nanako said to him afterward. Keone told him directly about Nanako's mission. This surprised Taki. Suddenly there was a sound of footsteps and Negi hurriedly grabbed Taki and hid. The atmosphere between the two instantly became ambiguous. Though Negi felt that it was a bit bad. But he couldn't care less as he looked at such a beautiful young girl. But he couldn't care less as he was looking at such a beautiful girl but he didn't want to and it was all in the eyes of Yusuke who was passing by. When school is over Negi finds Yusuke and wants to talk to him. But Yusuke has a meeting to attend so Negi says he will wait for him. This makes Yusuke think it's something important. They are not sure if it's important or not but it's not. While waiting Negi wonders if he's violating government regulations. But he couldn't make sense of all this mess. He was sleepy. At that moment Yusuke who was coming back from a meeting ran into Taki again. When he got to the classroom he saw Negi who had fallen asleep. He laughed at the strange sleeping position of Negi. When he laughed he sighed. Yusuke's eyes changed as he looked at the sleeping Kotun. When Negi woke up he found Yusuke sitting next to him as if nothing had happened. Yusuke asked him what was wrong. Kone stammers and asks him if he likes Taki. Yusuke asks what would happen if he did. But luckily Yusuke immediately said it was a joke. This makes Negi relax. At this point Negi doesn't know what will happen between the four of them. On this day Nanako came to Negi's house as a guest. When Negi's mom came up she said that the two of them were a perfect match. She even speculated if they had already kissed. This made the two of them a bit shy. At this point Nanako asks a question why do people kiss? Mom tells her that it's because she likes it of course. This makes Nanako think. After dinner the two are going to their room to wait for someone from the labor ministry. First time Nanako goes straight to the wrong direction. Thankfully Negi held her hand in time. Nanako looked at the hands held together and remembered the scene she saw earlier. She froze in place. When Negi asked her what was wrong she could only cover it up by saying that she was too hot. When she got to her room Nanako was instantly shocked by Kone's cluttered room. But she was kind enough to help Negi organize the room. Keone never thought that there would be a girl in his room. He even thought the room smelled better. Suddenly Nanako found a photo album. Turns out it's Negi's graduation album from elementary school. She looks at the pictures in the album and can't help but spit out how corny Negi was as a kid. Nanako asks Negi when he fell in love with Taki. It wasn't the day he was handed the eraser anyway. Nanako asks Negi when he fell in love with Gauchi but it wasn't the day he handed over the eraser even though Negi knew it probably wasn't that day. He seemed to be floating. When he saw Taki he felt that she was shining. This made Nanako feel so romantic. However she mentioned the mission she gave to Negi again. Faced with Nanko's questioning he told the truth. And Nanako didn't have the slightest reaction. She was glad she didn't feel anything. She was going to make them kiss a few more times. Just as Negi said he was happy after the kiss Nanko's expression changed. Keone thought Nanako was angry but to her surprise Nanako immediately retorted loudly. Suddenly an accident happens. Fortunately that's when the two from the labor province showed up. This relieved the awkward atmosphere between the two. They are here to do a feedback survey. One of the judges noticed that the atmosphere between the two was not right and he thought that they were doing something shameful. He told the two that it was nothing to be ashamed of. After all one of the powerful things about science's red thread is the overwhelming amount of information. They go through countless questionnaires and conversations starting when they enter elementary school. This is all factors that influence government notification. That's why you can say that the government notifies the people who are the most suitable for you in the whole world. And it has nothing to do with looks. After all people are looking for beauty but marriages based on appearance have a very high failure rate. That's why it's a scientific conclusion that people don't fall in love because of their appearance. He said it looks like the two are still very compatible and should have kissed. Some couples are so fast that they can have a baby in a month. He told the two to hurry up and cheer up. This made them both shy. Just as the two were leaving he asked Negi for Gao Chi's address. This is their next stop. Keen anxiously asks if Gao Chi's notice has arrived. But they say no comment. When he heard the news Xiao Zhen immediately fell into depression. The thought of Gao Chi marrying someone else makes his heart ache. But with Nanko's comforting words Negi quickly picks himself up again. Then mom told them the news. They will go camping together next week. At the next day Taki came to the classroom. 
Keen wanted to ask her if she had received her notice or not. But throughout the day he didn't find the chance to ask. But the opportunity came during the last class. The teacher sent him to stay with Gao Qi to make a pamphlet. The teacher sent him to stay with Yusuke to make the pamphlet but Negi who was moving things around suddenly realized that Taki and Yusuke were discussing something. He went to the classroom first and finally waited for Taki. He looked at the beautiful girl in front of him. He looked at the beautiful girl in front of him and saw that there were no pores on her smooth skin. He finally got up the courage to ask. He asked Taki if the labor department had gone looking for her. After receiving an affirmative answer he congratulated the young girl. Then he asked what kind of person he was. Then he asked what kind of person he was Taki said it was pretty good and that they even lived together. This made Negi feel as if he was being bombarded by thunder. When he got home Negi received a call from Nanako. He reported the situation to Nanako. Nanako brought him the news that Camping Gauchi will also come. Just when Negi thought that the situation might be a bit awkward he suddenly had a great idea. He was going to invite Yusuke to go camping with him. But as soon as he made his proposal he was strongly opposed by Yusuke. After Negi's persuasion Yusuke had no choice but to say yes. The camping trip is finally over and Negi and the others are going to go camping. When Taki sees Yusuke he is very surprised. Nanako even just spat out why this pervert is here too. Takei thought that Yusuke did something to Nanako. The atmosphere between them is still very weird. But this scene made Kone very concerned. The atmosphere between the four of them on the train was very awkward. Na asked Yusuke what he was saying to Taki. Yusuke just said it was nothing. This made Negi think that Yusuke still likes Taki. They finally arrived at their destination. The two of them were in charge of preparing the ingredients. In Negi's eyes Yusuke must be the kind of person who has a lot to hide. But he didn't realize that Yusuke was really bad at cooking. But he didn't realize that Yusuke was really bad at cooking. Just as he was breathing a sigh of relief Yusuke came to ask him how much detergent he wanted. This left Kone completely speechless. When the dishes were done Negi went to the woods to look for Taki and the girls. But the view in front of him was something he would remember for the rest of his life. The two were playing in their swimsuits. The two of them were playing in their swimsuits and he panicked and hid. But the man's instincts drove him back. Suddenly the two of them spotted Negi. Nanako hadn't realized that Nanako had asked Negi to come and play with her. The two of them were not aware of the fact that Nako had asked Negi to play with them so they went straight to him. But she stepped on a rock. Nanako's foot is sprained and she can't stand up because of the pain. Kaone offered to carry her but she refused. After all that would be unladylike. So Negi had to do it another way. It was not expected that the princess hug would be so close. Despite the fact that he told himself to keep a normal mind. But the young girl's skin was so smooth and even had a nice aroma. And this was the first time he was this close to a young girl. This situation made him a bit unable to calm down. But as Kotone moved around the young girl seemed a little off. Kaone asked her what was wrong with her with concern. But Nanako scolded him for being an idiot and then just left on her own. The answer left him confused. At that moment Cookie also came back. She just happened to see this scene. Suddenly Yusuke asks Taki why she came here as she a masochist. Of course Taki denied it. She's just here because she doesn't want to make Nanako sad. Negi also saw the two of them talking at that moment. The smile on Taka's face made him uncomfortable. Nanako's foot injury was also treated by her father. He asked Negi what he wanted to do in the future. Of course Negi wants to specialize in his beloved ancient burial mounds. He tells the crowd the reason why he loves ancient tombs. Both Taki and Nanako smiled at Negi's eloquent speech. The seriousness of Negi gave Nanako a different feeling. At night Negi and Yusuke are talking to each other. In his heart he always thought that Yusuke likes Taki but he just cares about his feelings and doesn't show it. So he was ready to ask about this. But the distance which was almost close to each other made Yusuke so nervous that he couldn't speak. Just then someone outside called out Negi's name. It turns out to be the two Nanakos who are looking for them to try out for the Guts Club. Through Nanko's grouping they each set off. Nanako comes up and tells Yusuke to stay away from her. Yusuke says that Nanako keeps calling him a pervert just because of one comment but. She's so petty. He expresses concern for Negi's future. But Nanako says it won't be. She believed that Negi wouldn't do anything to make the other person hate him. Even though he's stupid and unreliable. But he's both honest and kind. Yusuke didn't realize that she thought so highly of Kone. The two just came to an end. Nanako began to imagine what it was like for the two Kotone. After all it was so romantic to be on a date in such a wooded area. That made Yusuke stay a little bit. And the two on the other side the atmosphere was just right. Even Taki suggested the two to hold hands. After all it's still dangerous when it's so dark. Taking her hand Taki asked Negi if it was her who sprained her foot during the day would he help her like that too. Kaone replies without hesitation of course he would. This makes Taki a little happy. Suddenly a glowing object passed by. The two walked towards the light source. But suddenly Taka's foot slipped and the two fell down. And when Negi slowed down the scene in front of him froze him in his tracks. He looked at the beautiful girl before he remembered to apologize. He hurriedly asked her if she was hurt. But the next moment he was pulled into someone's arms. 
and on the other side Yusuka was talking to Nanako. He asked Nanako if she set up the two of them what would she stand for when the time comes. After all if Kone chose Taki it would mean that he gave up his government notice. And Nanako becomes an outsider completely. Even if they were a friend something like a friend would be immediately dissolved by greed. And at that time Nanako might marry someone else. This person might be even dumber than Kone and even more perverted than Yusuka. And if Negi refused the government notice Negi's dream wouldn't be realized. After all it's a blot on his life resume. All in all what Nanako is doing now will only bring misfortune to Kone. Suddenly the two men spot the fireflies as well. Waiting for them to catch up they realize the two below. The two were acting a little suspicious. Kaone rushes to explain. And just like that all four of them went down below. They had to walk down the road. Kaone walked strangely making Yusuka think they had done something. The four of them followed the light of the fireflies and saw a beautiful picture of nature. Kaone tells them that fireflies only drink water and die immediately after laying their eggs. The four of them just watched together this beautiful and sad scene in front of them. That night Nanako has a very strange dream. She dreamed that she and Negi kissed. Nanako never thought she could have such a dream. It made her ashamed and overwhelmed at the same time. After waking up Nanako went to the library to check out the information. She didn't realize that kissing for 10 seconds was not a good idea. She didn't realize that kissing for 10 seconds exchanges 80 million bacteria. And that helps boost the immune system. While she was researching the meaning of kissing a young girl called her name several times. When Nanako turned around it was a girl she didn't recognize who was greeting her. The young girl was none other than Namasaka the second best in the entire school. Nanako had only heard the name, and this was the first time they had met. Masaka said that she had seen Nanako before. After all Bugsy is still famous. Nanako turns her head and walks away and Namasaka rushes to apologize. Masaku apologizes she says that if not Bugsy how about little Lily? This made Nanako upset. She doesn't understand why Mimasaka had to give her a title. It turns out that Mimasaka is the sister of the intern doctor who was in charge of Nanako before. At the time her brother said that Nanako had never cried despite the pain of the treatment. But she never cried. She was a strong child. So Misaka always wanted to be friends with Nanako. But Nanako still hesitantly rejected her. After all the two of them had never talked before. This made her feel very sudden. Misaka didn't say much just that it was a shame. After just a few words she knew that Nanako was a good kid with integrity and fun. It would be fun if she could be friends with Nanako. The words reminded Nanako of what Negi had said. And on the other side of the room Negi looked at Taki who was serious about her class. He had thought that after experiencing the camping trip the two would become close. But instead Taki avoided him intentionally or unintentionally when she met him. This made him lose his mind. Suddenly the teacher told Kone and Takeda to hurry back. They have to go to the Ministry of Labor's workshop today. They both don't know what this meeting is for. But when Yusuka learned the news his expression became grave. He seems to know something. When he got to the place Negi saw a young girl who walked in as well. He recognized that it was Igarashi who was in the same middle school as him. When he went inside Kone saw Takeda and the person he was notified about Yashimuyo. The young girl introduced herself sharply. She's also a college student at a music academy. Keone instantly feels that Takeda doesn't deserve her. Keone looked at the suite too and thought it was very unbelievable. He wondered if he and Nanako were like that in the eyes of others. Just then he suddenly heard Nanako's voice. The young girl's new outfit directly made Negi look dumbfounded. He asked Nanako why she suddenly changed her hairstyle. Is it weird that Nanako said that a friend did it for her? Keone stammers and compliments Nanako on her beauty. In an instant both of them are a bit shy. Suddenly Nanako pulls out a ceramic figurine. This instantly made Negi happy. This made him shake with joy. Nanako told him that this was for him. Keone actually thanks him madly with his whole body trembling. And in return Negi gives Nanako a gift. This left both Takeda speechless. But Nanako accepted the gift happily. Yoshio Yashiki praised the two for being such a good match. She could sense that they really liked each other. This makes Negi and the others a little shy. At that moment an announcement came that the seminar will start soon. Takeda and the two of them left leaving the two of them embarrassed. And in the surveillance room Igarashi was talking to Kanzuya. She calls this lecture session a bad joke but Kanzuya contradicts her. It's just simply helping them out. After all this is something they have to face. When Kanzuya left Igarashi looked at the teenagers in the screen. The seminar had officially begun. Article 1 explained the origin of the government notice from the beginning. This took Negi a bit by surprise. Suddenly Kanzuya's words changed. He went so far as to talk about something that only adults would understand. He even gave everyone a small toy. Nanako had never seen these things before. Just as Negi was getting embarrassed Kanzuya spoke up. He asked how everyone was getting along with their dates. Keone asked Nanako if she was happy. The young girl said yes. One article was relieved to see that everyone was happy. He told the crowd. Playing poker is a very sacred thing. Not only that but it's good for everyone's health. This made Negi a little unnatural. But Nanako seemed interested. One said that maybe some girls have a bit of an inferiority complex. This comment seemed to touch Nanako. 
But that's okay government notification is the most scientific option. As long as there are no surprises they'll get the best results. The two were like Cinderella and her crystal slipper the perfect combination. This comment made Negi unexpectedly feel like it summed it up nicely. At this moment an article showed the crowd a video clip. Inside the screen was a couple from knowing each other to falling in love all the way through. This made Xiao Zhen had to think of his goddess. He hurriedly stopped himself and began to memorize the circumference silently. Suddenly he realized that Nanako was a little nervous. He asked Nanako if she was okay. Though the young girl didn't say anything he clenched his fists. This represented his inner unrest. Because he remembered the dream he had in the morning. Suddenly Nanako found the terracotta figurine that Kone gave her. Kane looked at such a young girl but had a strange feeling inside. Suddenly a man from the Ministry of Labor sits down next to him. He asked Negi if he was faced with a favorite girl and a government notification object. What would he choose between true love on one side and a lie on the other? This left Negi at a bit of a loss for words. Before he could figure it out the man stood up. He told him in passing that there would be a monitor in the next room. Without waiting for Negi to ask for clarification the man simply left. And that's when the lights came on. The next exercise was to spend the night in the room with his partner. This got everyone in the room talking. Looking at one of the smiles Cone blushed. Suddenly Kotone heard the people below say. If they don't follow the rules they will be severely punished. Kuhn recalled what the man had told him and instantly his face became extremely ugly. And at that moment Nanako still didn't know what was going on. And just like that the two came into the room. Nanako spoke to Kone somewhat nervously. But Negi was a little distracted. He wondered if the surveillance referred to cameras or eavesdropping attempts. And what exactly is the punishment they are talking about? Nanako didn't know what was wrong with Kone but still talked to Kone. Suddenly Kone tackled Nanako onto the bed. He kissed him straight away. Knowing that he saw Nanako's tears he finally came to his senses. Kaone finally gained Nanko's forgiveness. What he didn't know was that the young girl on the other side was suffering because of the harsh reality. The next day Negi looks full of energy. The next day Negi looks full of energy while Taki is rehearsing the play seriously. The young girl's seriousness made Negi look dumbfounded. At that moment someone asks him if he has seen Yusuke. Negi found Yusuke in one of the classrooms. At that moment two female classmates also came here. It turns out that Taki and Yusuke's costumes are ready. But Yusuke turns around and walks away and Negi catches up with him. He asks Yusuke if it's a good idea to leave like that. Yusuke said that he is not going to do it anymore. He doesn't want to have anything to do with this anymore. Despite Negi urging him not to give up Yusuke didn't agree. After all he didn't want to wear that kind of clothes and be the object of others' ridicule. Just as Kone tried to make another effort he was pushed away by Yusuke. At that moment a man suddenly appeared. Yusuke was so scared that he turned around and ran but he was still stopped by the man. What Negi didn't realize was that the man in front of him was Yusuke's father. The three of them came to the restaurant. Yusuke's dad lectured Yusuke that it's not right to hit your friends. Kone defended Yusuke at this point. He said, Didn't someone say that if you get hit by a handsome guy you become a handsome guy? This time he's earned it. Who knew that this would make Yusuke's dad laugh? He told Yusuke that you don't have many friends yourself so you must treasure Negi. He apologized for Yusuke. Yusuke wasn't like this when he was a kid. Not only was he popular growing up but he had a lot of friends. But I don't know what's wrong with him now. Yusuke got a little tired of hearing this and got up to go to the bathroom. Yusuke's dad thinks that Negi is really good at opening up Yusuke's mind. So the future of Yusuke is in the hands of Kone. You know it's a good thing that you're a good boy. On the way home Negi asks Yusuke if he really doesn't want to act anymore. Yusuke hates the attention. And he doesn't want to arouse anyone's interest even more. But Negi said that he was really looking forward to Yusuke playing Juliet. But Romeo and Juliet is just a tragedy of willful love and willful martyrdom. Yusuke hates this kind of story. Keone was a bit impressed by him. But is that really true? Were Romeo and Juliet only in love because of the tragedy? Or do they have something they want to protect even if it costs them their lives? Gao Chi is taking the measurements for the costume she is going to wear. She tells the girl not to tell anyone. But the girl didn't realize that she had such an exaggerated bust. The sound of teenage girls playing around makes the boys outside want to get into it. Next up is Yusuke. This instantly attracted a lot of girls to come and watch. This made Negi realize how fierce girls can be. In this way they kept busy preparing. Until the beginning of the school year in September he still kept in touch with Nanako by letter. The rehearsals for the play have also entered an official stage. Taki also looks energized. When Negi had an accident delivering flyers Gao Chi helped him. After delivering the flyers he asks if Gao Chi is okay. He thinks that Gao Chi is pushing herself right now. Gao Chi says that Xiao Zhen is really great. Actually she's not very outgoing and even when she was playing the lead role she didn't want to try very hard. She's only doing it because it would upset everyone if she turned it down. So she's probably pushing herself like Negi said. But now even if she's pushing herself she's still going to perform well. Walking down the road Cookie tells Negi that the crew even let Cookie and Yusuke kiss. This makes Kone can't believe her ears. Of course the offer was rejected straight away by both of them. That's what made Kone sigh in relief. 
He asked Taki what she thought of Yusuke. The serious Yusuke is still quite handsome, Taki thought. This made Negi agree. Time flies and the cultural festival is finally about to start. Yusuke also changed into Juliet's clothes. And Takuyuki's Romeo's outfit was a favorite of countless young girls. Looking at the different Taki while gawking, Negi remembered what Taki said earlier. She said she had always liked Kone. But she didn't dare to say it out loud and could only keep suppressing her feelings. She also said that she envied Nanako who could be brave enough to speak her mind. Till then Negi didn't realize that Gauchi had been forcing herself to smile all along. She really doesn't know what liking is exactly. And at that moment a young girl also spotted Taki. Keone was startled. That was his junior high school classmate Sayuri. He had once been reprimanded by a teenage girl for doing something wrong. He instantly wanted to just slip away while they weren't looking. And just then Igarashi arrived. Suddenly Igarashi spotted Negi. I don't know why Koyanagi was so angry at the mention of Negi but I don't know why Koyanagi was so angry at the mention of Koyanagi. Igarashi seems to have something to say to Gauchi but she gives up. At this point Negi meets Shireto from the labor department. Keone thinks he's skipping work to hang out. Shireto refutes this outright saying that he's on the job. After all there are a lot of people here who are in charge of him. Suddenly he brings up something that Negi had asked him to do. It turns out that Negi has been holding a grudge against the previous cell phone notification. Even though he knew it was probably just a misreading he still wanted white hair to check it out for him. Today the results finally came out. From the conclusion it looks like the person Kone's government notification was for Nanako. But his side of the government notification service shows signs of having been modified by intervention. It's possible that someone sent him that notification on purpose. But that doesn't rule out a system error. White hair suddenly asked Xiao Jin what if it was really the government notification that was wrong. Without waiting for Root to speak white hair gave up his inquiry. At this point he asked if Kotone had made up with Nanako. Because he just saw her at the school gate. Nanako hadn't seen Negi for many days. Today she finally got up the courage to come to their school. But she seemed a little nervous. Misaka thought she wanted to go back. It turns out that Misaka was commissioned by Nanako to accompany her. To do so she even skipped her club activities. But she felt it was all worth it to meet Nanko State. This made Nanako a little shy. She could only say that Kone was just a normal boy. Originally Nanako was happy that Negi had come. But once he remembered what Taki said earlier he didn't even know how to face Nanako. He just decided not to think about it. But he didn't expect to run into Nanako the next second. After asking about the location of the plane Nanako left without looking back. Keone thought that Nanako didn't even want to talk to him. This made him a bit lost. Suddenly the loudspeaker announced that their class play will start soon. Suddenly the loudspeaker announced that their class play was about to start and Negi saw Yusuke getting changed. He rushed after him. He said that he hadn't seen Yusuke's new costume yet and could he tag along to see it. Yusuke decisively refused. He said that he would kill Kone if he dared to look at it. He said that he would kill him if he dared to look at them. His work is over for the day. But he still wants to help. But he's a klutz and he's always giving people trouble. He looked at the busy crowd and wondered what he had done for the cultural festival. At this point everyone had gone backstage leaving only Negi and Yusuke to change. He asked Yusuke if he was nervous. He asked Yusuke if he was nervous and Yusuke told him that he was fine. Ne said that even though he's not going to be on stage he still can't calm down. When it became clear that he wasn't going to be useful at all at the cultural festival he regretted it a little. He had some regrets. He always felt like he didn't use his full strength. Yusuke told him that it was because of Negi that he started to fit in. He was happy to be able to think and discuss with his classmates. Finally the play they'd been preparing for days is about to start. On the stage gout she looks a little bit out of breath. But when she saw Negi cheering her on she smiled. The drama has come to an end. The crowd on stage even supported them with loud applause. Yusuke looked at Negi from the stage and finally smiled. After the show broke up Negi was thinking about how to greet his harem members afterward. Suddenly a young girl called out to him. It turned out to be Igarashi. Keone asked her what's the matter. Seeing that Igarashi didn't say anything Kone was just about to leave. Igarashi then asked him if he had been notified by the government of Taki. This statement surprised Kone. He wonders how Igarashi knew about this. Igarashi told him that Taki had sacrificed everything to fall in love. Since the day he turned 15 Taki was the one he was destined to fall in love with. Negi was surprised by this. He was about to ask more questions when Nanako stepped in. She asked Negi if he had received any more government notices from Taki. Without waiting for Kone to answer she then asked Igarashi what does faded mean. What the hell does she know? But Igarashi didn't say anything she got up and was about to leave. Nanako has a stomach full of unanswered questions. Negi could only explain that he didn't mean to not tell her. After all he didn't know how to talk to Nanako. This makes Nanako very lost. Keone told her that Shireto had said that he was right about Nanako. Nanako was relieved. Suddenly Negi remembers that he's still in a cold war with Nanako. He rushed to apologize for talking to her by accident. Nanako said let's call a truce for now. After all there are more important things right now. 
Anyway now they need to find Igarashi and ask her about it. Nanako suggests to find her contact information first. At that moment Mamasaka approached them as well. Nanako introduced her to Negi. Masaka then realized that this is Nanako's precious boyfriend. This comment made the two very shy. The two then found Taki. Nanako complimented Taka's eyes. Then the two looked at each other. He was just about to ask. Suddenly Yusuka's arrival interrupted Kone. Nanako then realized that Juliet was a boy. She complimented Yusuka's beauty. And Taki and the others told her the truth. Nanako didn't realize that the person in front of her was the pervert Yusuka. She thought that Yusuka was dressed like this voluntarily. Yusuka hurriedly denied it. The crowd laughed out loud. Then two people appeared and laughed at Yusuka. They were Yusuka's dad and brother. Yusuka's dad just found out that Negi took Yusuka on a camping trip. In return he invites Negi and the others to Yusuka's brother's wedding. Of course Taki and Nanako will be there. At the end of the night Kone and Nanako were making phone calls. At the end of the day the two still hadn't asked for Igarashi's number. They decided to ask again the next day. Keone was asking for contact information. But when he was suddenly asked to send a message to a girl not only was he nervous, he didn't know what to send. When he finally decided to send the message the phone responded instantly. When he opened it he was instantly confused. On the other side there was a strange girl asking Nanako a question. This surprised her something that had never happened before. Masaka said that Nanako was completely different from before. She used to be so expressionless that people were afraid to approach her. If she was the same as before now she probably wouldn't even dare to talk to Nanako. And that's when Nanako received the message. When she hurriedly found Negi Negi was mumbling to himself alone as he piled up the ancient tomb. It turns out that the friend request Kone sent to Igarashi was instantly rejected. Didn't he know what he was doing that was so bad why was he so hated by the young girl? There was nothing he could do but let Nanako try. Keen felt that even he a junior high school friend had been rejected Nanako was even more unlikely. But he didn't realize that the next moment Nanako had already succeeded in her invitation. They agreed to meet at school tomorrow. This made Negi even more lost. The next day rolled around and they arrived at Igarashi's school. Nanako realized something the person who initiated the government notification was also Igarashi. And that's when Igarashi arrived. The atmosphere between the three became heavy. Then the three came to the cat cafe. Two young girls were already playing. Nanako asked Igarashi what her purpose really was. She just wants to protect Taki properly. And she doesn't approve of what's going on with Taki and Negi at all. She asked Nanako back why she as the object of Negi's affection would support Taki. Nanako just heard the love story of the two and was touched. So she wants to help them. But what does she gain by giving away the person she will marry in the future? This leaves Nanako speechless. Keone asks Igarashi why she's telling him this if she doesn't approve of him and Taki. Igarashi says that there is a connection between the two that is more important than government notifications. In fact she used to hate Gao Chi. The young girl has always been the center of the class and has a very high popularity. But she felt that Taka's smile was very shallow like she didn't want people to see through to her heart. Obviously everyone treats her as a friend. This made her feel. It was even more disgusting than her own expressionless face. Then she saw Gao Chi looking at the photo and staring at it. She realized that the photos Gao Chi wanted to buy all had the same person's picture in them. She asked Gao Chi if she liked Xiao Jin. She asked Gao Chi if she liked Xiao Jin but she had to tell her not to tell anyone. She doesn't have the courage to write her name. In the end Igarashi helped her. Koi happily thanked her. It was the first time Igarashi saw the real Gao Chi. In the days that followed she watched as Gao Chi took a long way to borrow a book just to see Negi one more time. Igarashi saw the young girl's love in her eyes. She asked Gao Chi what was so good about Negi. She can't find a single good thing about him. But Taki says that no matter what others think she thinks that Negi is the best. She even wished she could write a letter to Negi's government partner so that she could understand Negi's benefits. The selflessness of Taka's liking makes Igarashi think that falling in love is really beautiful. It can make a person shine so much. But the fact that the object is Negi makes her unable to accept it. Suddenly Nanako asks her what her relationship is with the initiator of the government notice. Turns out it was her grandmother. It was her grandmother who created the government notice. She tells the two that the government notice is an existence that can decide a person's fate. And after meeting that person any relationship up until now would become like a lie. That's what her grandmother said. Nanako asks Igarashi what she thinks of the government notice. But she doesn't know herself. If it's possible to meet the person you're destined to meet through the government notification. She also wants to know what kind of feeling that would be. So she wanted to protect Gao Chi. Then suddenly came the voice of white hair. He's been listening from the side for half a day. He asked Igarashi what exactly he wanted to do. The object of Negi's notification was Nanako and the algorithmic process was flawless. He tells Igarashi not to talk nonsense. Igarashi contradicts him. White hair adds that what the young girl just said is also nonsense. She's referring to Taka's wonderful love affair with the government notification as a faded love affair. He told Igarashi. The object that you naturally fall in love with and the object that the government notifies you of are not to be confused. 
After all she just wants to help Taki. But again she doesn't know what to do. All in all he hoped that Igarashi would not mislead them with that kind of ambiguous thoughts. After hearing those words Igarashi picked up her clothes and was about to leave. She said that she really shouldn't talk about this with someone who doesn't intend to choose Gauchi. It was enough that Gauchi had her to protect her. After that she simply left the place. When they left the place the two of them walked on their way home. Nanako couldn't help but ask Kone who he would really choose. Keone wasn't sure how he should answer. But he knew that he really liked being with Nanako. He offered to take Nanako's hand and lead him home with him. On this day Negi and his harem members are going to attend Yusuke's brother's wedding. Yusuke's parents are getting married because of a government notice. They say every day that they are living happily ever after. So his own brother also got married because of the government notice. If I can show them that I'm happy I'll be doing my filial duty. Yusuke's side would be stress-free. Keone looked over to Nanako after hearing that. He didn't know if he liked Nanako or not. But he knows he likes Taki. When he was in elementary school he saw Taka's smile. At that time he felt that Gao Chi was the one he was destined to be with. But then he remembered what Igarashi said and he wanted to know what Gao Chi's lie was. Then a woman appeared behind them. She asks if they are a couple notified by the government. Yusuke tells her that only Negi and Nanako are. It turns out that the woman is the person in charge of publicizing this venue. She wants to ask two teenage girls to model for their brochure. This surprises them both a bit. After all they're just high school students. The woman said it was just right. The woman said it was just right they were advertising to government announced couples who were going to get married during high school. She hoped that the two teenage girls could wear wedding dresses for the photo shoot. This made Negi a little excited. Nanako asked Taki for her opinion and Taki agreed. She said that it would be an early rehearsal. Though Nanako was a bit shy they eventually decided to participate. The two then wrote down their contact information. The women would contact them in a few days. And they can bring Negi with them for a visit. The wedding was officially started and the staff from the Ministry of Labor was their officiant. The screen showed images of them meeting and falling in love. Keen wondered if his own love experience would be made into a short movie like this when he got married. This made him feel a little embarrassed. But then he suddenly thought of Taki. If he and Nanako got married would Gao Chi be far away from him? And Nanako and Gao Chi are looking forward to the beauty of the wedding. Kochi could see that Nanako was happy after all the young girl's eyes were sparkling. Suddenly Nanako brings up the fact that her classmate from earlier hit on her. This is the first time this has happened. And Asaka says she's become gentler than before. She thinks it's all because of Negi and Taki. Yusuke's brother's wedding is coming to an end. Just as they are taking the group photo Negi suddenly realizes that he seems to have left his phone on the table. When he finds the phone he suddenly realizes that Taki is sitting on the floor. When he finds the phone he suddenly realizes that Gao Chi is sitting on the floor. Gao Chi said she was fine she was just touched by the wedding. But Xiao Zhen is a bit unconvinced. The first thing he did was to look at the fragile Gao Chi in front of him and he kissed her. Nanako who was looking for her saw this scene. When he got home Negi was lying alone on the bed. He thought back to what happened during the day. He was a bit regretful for doing such a rash thing. Because the expression on Taka's face at that time was completely different from the first time they kissed. Even though he and Gao Chi have become closer now. But sometimes he felt that it was becoming more distant. He didn't know what he could do for Gao Chi maybe he would only end up hurting her more deeply. When he thought about it he fell asleep. When he opened his eyes he saw his mom calling him to the spa. Turns out his family and Nanako's family had agreed to go to the hot springs together. When he arrived at the place Negi was a little unresponsive. He strikes up a conversation with Nanako but to his surprise the young girl doesn't respond at all. Keone's father takes his luggage and tells him to take Nanako with him. And so the two of them go on a trip together. Just as Nanako is about to fall into the water cone holds her up. When they arrived at the hotel they didn't realize that the moms had only given them a key. It's been a week since Negi and Nanako had their heart-to-heart -heart talk. Finally it's the day that the girls will be modeling their wedding dresses. Nanako has something she wants to say to Taki. On the other hand Yusuke was curious why Negi didn't go. But Kone feels like he lied. Maybe he was wrong when he accepted Nanako's offer. Because of his rash action not only would he hurt Nanako but he might also hurt Taki. He had no way to face the two now. Yusuke asks him back why he agreed to Nanako's suggestion if that's the case. Kagani feels that such an ordinary version of himself doesn't deserve their favor at all. Yusuke tells him that if someone really likes him. They would not only be hurt by Kotone's actions but they would be happy with Kotone's every move. If he really likes them he needs to hurry over and say so. With Yusuke's advice Negi finally came to his senses. And on the other side the two have already passed the wedding dress. Nanako was curious why Taki rejected her proposal. But Taki wasn't going to tell her the truth. She just talked about how happy she was that Negi's government notification was for Nanako. She's curious is Kone really coming back today? But this time Nanako looked very frustrated. She and Kotone haven't been in touch for a long time. She understands that Negi might not be coming over. Then Taki was suddenly called away. And at that moment the other main character is desperately trying to get here. Even when he falls to the ground he doesn't care. 
He has to come and meet his two favorite women. At this point in the shoot the performance of the two is a big disappointment to everyone. Although they are beautiful their smiles are too stiff. No matter how much the crew tried to coax them they couldn't smile. Until the door was pushed open and Ruth's figure appeared. Then they cried tears of joy. At Nanko's request the three took a happy wedding photo together. This is the moment when the red thread binds the three together. This is the end of the anime. I hope everyone can find their own red thread and hold on to their destiny.